Now I'm doing the next talk on uh, maneuvering through major life transitions. And I do love this quote by Mildred. And I think you should remember this on every birthday. Don't get all weird about getting older. Our age is merely the number of years the world has been enjoying us. <laughs> a very good attitude. Now, certainly we do go through a lot of trans, uh, you know, transitions during our life. And, you know, particularly if you live for a long time, and George Burns lived to 97. And also, can everybody hear in the back with this new mic? Okay, good. Um, and I want you to do something for me. I want you to clap really hard. Well, I learned that from George Burns because someone asked him how he was adjusting to, uh, to, at his advanced age. And he said, I now ask for my applause in advance. <laughs> Just in case. Well, what we're going to do is look at some of the major transitions that we face, particularly as seniors. Um, and we do face a number of those. And I'm going to talk about the first two just briefly because the others are either topics for next year or have been topics. Uh, for one, one any, anything, all of these are important. Certainly, first two are the ones that we deal with a lot. Um, but a lot of it has to do with attitude. Maybe. And this is the quote. The remarkable thing is we have a choice every day regarding the attitude we will embrace for that day. And if you remember that article about having a negative uh, attitude towards aging would actually increase your risk for dementia. So it's really important to have an attitude. Now, I have an attitude, uh, usually positive, but I'll, I'll tell you a story about last night at the volleyball game, because it was so exciting and we won, it was wonderful. Um, but Bill and I had come separately. And I have a, a big problem with direction. So I came out to get in my car. I couldn't find it. I spent 45 minutes walking around the garage, looking for my little mini. And, um, you know, I, then I had this very lovely young man in a cart come and get me <laughs> and take me around till we finally found it. Now, I could have gotten really exasperated with myself about that, but I sat back and I said, you know, I've got a lot of good exercise. <laughs> and I met a lovely young man with, and who treated me with aloha. So overall, it was really good. <laughs> so sometimes you have to have that kind of attitude. Now, attitude. Uh, this is uh, the graduation of our granddaughter, Audrey Virginia. Um, it was a wonderful day. And, uh, she, has a, she always has a saying, have a lovely day, and which I really appreciate. But her grand, that's me, says, I'll make it a lovely day. <laughs> so sometimes you have to take those days that aren't so perfect and make them a lovely day. Now, some transitions are actually quite humorous. For those of us who go to the Clinique counter to get makeup or any other counter, they only hire 20-year-olds. <laughs> they have no wrinkles. And every time I go, they lean over the counter and look at my skin really closely and say, have you been using your moisturizer? <laughs> They're going to get hurt one day. <laughs> and the other one, I bet you remember this moment, when you were asked, do you want your senior discount? <laughs> Now I just wear a hat, in case they think I might be too young to get it. But recently, Bill and I were playing golf, and we walked into the golf shop to register, and the fellow's there, and he looks up and says, oh, two seniors? And Bill and I looked at each other and said, I didn't tell him, did you tell him? How does he know that? <laughs> we gave him a very hard time. So let's look at the first topic. Working versus retirement or changing jobs. Uh, that's a big issue for a lot of folks, and it's not just retirement. It's when you change from one job to another. Um, all, right, all right, I want to have you all do a little exercise. I want all people who are retired to please stand. And stay standing. Okay, now I want all people who are still working outside the home to please stand. 
Okay, I want you to look around. There is thousands of years of experience and wisdom in this room. Give yourselves a hand. Now you can sit down. Are you waving at me, honey? Oh, you. Oh, <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Now, I've uh, changed jobs on many occasions. I've actually retired twice um, because they would have kept my money otherwise, but not from UH. But I certainly had some adjustments, uh, moving from serving as chancellor to chancellor emeritus and professor. And these are the questions I got, and going from a 24-7 job, which I've had for many years. Somebody said, well, it must be tough going from being somebody to nobody. I definitely am not, nobody. <laughs> um, there is a reduction in invitations, um, at seeking advice from folks, and also speaking opportunities, all of which I enjoy. So I often thought about what helped me in the transition. And certainly it was the love of learning. It was the love of my own learning, but also helping other folks learn. And that's what gave birth to the Mini Medical School on Healthy Aging. It's to share that love and enjoyment. Oh, thank you. <laughs> also, I learned what weekends really were. I'd never had one where it wasn't filled, and so it's really kind of fun. You can relax and not get up early. Well, on many med school Saturdays you do. <laughs> but it really is interesting. But I think there's so much knowledge in this room, as I just pointed out. And I have a favor to ask for, for you to do. And that is to write on your evaluation something that helped you in making such a change, like a change to retirement or changing jobs. And then I'll share those with the whole class in an email, because you really have a lot of wisdom in this room that knows how to do it. And it's really helpful to others, so I'd appreciate that. So next, we're going to talk about health. Now, I think about health um, in a way about cars. When I got my 99 car, it was sleek, worked well. Everything ran smoothly. It was just wonderful. But things didn't stay that way. <laughs> After 17 years, there were a few problems, dents and um, nicks and all kinds, of, and then sometimes some big things. And we're a lot like cars. We need a lot of repairs and maintenance because we've been using the equipment longer. So that's normal. It's not, a, it's not a disease problem. It's the fact that we have been using this machine for many years, and that's a good thing. Um, so we're a little bit like a car. Now, everybody has a list that I call the list of ailments. And these, these are some of mine. I had to cut it short because it wouldn't fit on the list. So I'm not a paragon of health by any means. And it usually starts in our 40s, where we start accumulating some of these, sometimes even earlier. But I like this woman because she learned how to deal with this list. She ignored it. <laughs> now that's having attitude. Sometimes you have to just ignore the list. So I also decided I needed a new career, other than the mini med school. So I took up this one. <laughs> <laughs> now, I am the state javelin champion for my age group. I don't have any competitors, but that's a minor point. Minor point. I can throw reasonably well, and I have, but I had, I had to learn, and I enjoyed learning a new sport. Anything you learn that you have never done. And so I want to show you what it took to get me out there. First of all, my two coaches two great UH Manoa students. Rick, who's my sports medicine doctor. <laughs> You've met Billy Tang, who's my physical therapist. Todd, who's my massage therapist. <laughs> and Brian, who's my personal trainer. <laughs> and the point I'm making is we need help. And there's nothing wrong with getting help. In fact, I think it's a strength to ask for help. And this was a wonderful team, and really the reason I was able to compete. 
Now, I also am very fortunate as I have a group of cheerleaders. And this is our family, our sons and their families. And uh, they do cheer us on regardless of how crazy mother might have, the idea mother might have, which is nice. But I also put this up there because the future caregivers. Now, none of us really want to have our children be our caregivers, right? But it may be necessary. And we took care of them a lot longer than they're going to take care of us. <laughs> so I've been training the children, my children and grandchildren from the time they were three years old about taking care of me. <laughs> the grand, that's my name, does not carry anything. They carry everything. They're called my mules. <laughs> and it's very respected. It gives them a sense of responsibility. But they help me across streets. They do all kinds of things for me, and I love it. And I'm preparing them in case I have to be a, they have to be my caregiver. And it's a little bit in our genes, because Bill and I took care of my daddy, and my parents took care of his daddy. So I think they need to know that that's a possibility. And as always, they do need training. So get with it. Now, when I do compete, I have to, the one thing I notice about being older, it takes the tincture of time to help me recover. It takes a little longer to get back to where I was. And particularly since I was going to all those people for a reason <laughs> on the team. But I figured out some solutions. First of all, ice therapy. I use every ice bag known. But be careful, one time I gave myself frostbite. In addition, I really love the dark chocolate caramel sea salt, right? Even if it might keep me awake at night, like Bruce said, <laughs> it really is lovely. Also, I recover with music. I love music and I find it refreshes my soul and makes me feel better all the time. And these are some of my absolute favorites. Amy Hanaya Lee, plus wine, like that too. Tina Turner was with us last week. Mary Youngblood, Native American flute player, and Eno Sullivan, who has played several times in the mini med school. So figure out what works for you. But I have another practice that I do, and I want to share that with you. It's when you're thinking about life, and you're, I want you to think about your blessings, and learn to inhale blessings and exhale gratitude. Gratitude has been shown to help us age in a good way, if we're grateful for what we have and what life offers. I inhale the fact that I'm able to get out there and throw the javelin, and I exhale gratitude for all the folks that helped me do that. I inhale gratitude for all the people in this room and the people who made this course possible. I exhale gratitude for them for being that way and sharing their aloha. So I want you to sit there for just a moment and I want you, just like Billy was teaching us, take a very deep breath and inhale the blessings that you have. And exhale the gratitude you feel. This is an exercise you can do anytime, any place, and it's healthy. But I know what our biggest concern a lot of times is about getting older, and that's the quickness versus the slowness of our brains. We are slower in some ways. Um, getting answers, taking tests. And, but there's a good reason for that. Okay? And sometimes I call my children by three or four names before I get it right. <laughs> uh, but there are really some benefits related to that change in our brains, and I'm going to share that with you. Our brain is continually re-sculpting itself as we go through experiences and learning. The big important thing is we make new neurons or brain cells all the time. We're doing it right now. Nobody can see it, but we are doing it. And that's really important. Also, we're using more of our brain as it matures. And I want to show you what that looks like. This is a young brain versus an old brain. Okay, you see the young brain? It's kind of boring. It has a few leaves on it, but it doesn't have too much in it because it hasn't had the experiences that life has taught us. Now look at this beautiful old brain. 
It is bushy and full and, you know, it's just magnificent. And that's what our brains are like. We have to make a lot more connections in our brain because of the information and experiences we have. And it's, it's, research shows that. It's not just my saying it. Research shows that we have to make more connections. In addition, this is our brain, left and right. We use our whole brain as we age. Whereas when we're young, we predominantly use the left side, which is the logical, mathematical type of side, versus the more creative, intuitive side over here. The use of both sides is one of the main reasons we become more compassionate as we age. Okay? But it also takes us a longer time to do stuff because we're connecting back and forth. Now, there is one organ that kind of goes a little bit down, our, our amygdala. And I know you've been wondering about your amygdala. <laughs> but there are these two little spots here in your brain, very important. And they do slow down as we get older. And that is absolutely wonderful. Because when you have less response of your amygdala, you have a reduction in fear, anger, and hatred. And that is one of the reasons we mellow and also see more of the positive in situations rather than the negative. So don't worry that your amygdala is slowing down. It's perfectly okay. It makes life better. So as we go through life, aging does require our having, transition, make, having to make transitions through many changes. And that is true. And that will always be the case. But as we listen to other folks, and I particularly want to share a quote from a very wise person. The purpose of our lives is to be happy. So I wish you many years of happy and healthy aging. So mahalo nui loa. <laughs>